Hey guys, Jason here, and for those of you who don't know me um, and aren't familiar with Wheelie Worship and Got Worship, uh, I'm a guy who writes songs. I also uh, do some mentoring for worship leading and, and things like that, but one of the things that I love doing is writing songs, and um, any song that I ever write, I always have one wish for it, and that's that it gets used collectively by, um, by the church and worship leading world. Why? Because every song that I write, I want it to be written about a great and glorious God. And, and I'd love more than anything for the church global to be able to utilize that song. Uh, not for myself, but because I want to be able to give songs to the church to be able to use. And I think that should be the goal of any songwriter that's writing about God. Um, sometimes we write songs that are personal to ourselves because they're about our personal worship. Um, sometimes God prompts us whenever we write those songs to go, no buddy, that's not just a song that you need to sing to me. That's a song that the church collective needs to sing. And that's a, that's a different topic altogether. But here's something that's, that I've got in my heart this morning. Um, because I hear a lot of times in different forms, different places, different churches that I go to, uh, different places that I've had the privilege to be able to speak at, the conversation often comes up about um, different songwriters, different groups, different churches even that write songs. And the conversation comes up about two things, repetitive verses, repetitive lyrics, or number two, um, people that write songs that I just hear this phrase over and over about that the lyrics just aren't deep enough. And I want to talk about the dangers of using those two phrases. Um, now I want to set this up by saying one thing very clearly. Number one, above and uh, above and uh, <laughs> above everything, uh, keep this context, this framing in mind. When we're talking about songs written in the context of the church, then we better be doing one thing: we better be writing songs about God. No matter what context we're writing in, whether it's about uh, salvation, whether it's writing about God in the form of the Trinity, whether it's writing about his birth. Uh, we're writing about God if we're writing in the context of the church. Now, if we're writing country songs, if we're writing uh, songs for pop radio, if we're writing, you know, these things, and that, that's something else altogether. But if we're writing and talking in this context, we're talking about God. So keeping that in mind, when we make comments uh, about uh, complexity, I want you to understand if we're individually striving to write songs, we want to make sure that we're focused on writing songs about God and that we're always giving God our best in writing. Does that make sense? We always want to make sure that we're giving God our best. So we never, ever want to just half throw something up for the sake of, wow, I've got to write a song for this week for a service because my pastor said, hey, you're a songwriter. Can you write us a song on the topic of and go? Um, if you know that, hey, I'm not giving God my best with this, then sometimes it's best to say, hey, pastor, um, we need to let this one go and we need to do a song that's already been written for this because this just isn't giving God our best. So this conversation that I'm about to have has nothing to do with saying that we need to cheapen down or water down our best offerings to God. Now, with that being said, can I please beg and implore each of you that constantly say we're too repetitive with our lyrics, that constantly say the lyrics just aren't deep enough to watch the timbre of how you say that. Because what happens, and I see this constantly, are that great uh, potential would-be songwriters who have had the pressing and urging by God to write songs for him get stifled. And they say, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't even want to try because the bar keeps getting set higher and higher. And, and to be honest and, and to be rough with you, th th it's a bar that's being set by sometimes people that have no business setting a bar. What do I mean by that? Um, there's a level of critiquing that goes on to say the lyrics aren't deep enough. And yet sometimes um, the people that are saying that um, haven't yet had the opportunity to even set that bar because 
most of the people that I, that I see that, that say comments like that haven't even written a song. And I know it because I've asked the question before. Um, hey, let me, you know, do you mind if I see some of the songs that you've written? Because you, you've obviously got some influence in that um, because you've, oh, well, well, I haven't written any songs. Well, how do we know about the depth of songs if we haven't even written songs to begin with? Do you see my point? But we're setting the bar into others whenever you say the, the songs just aren't deep enough that people who want to write songs, they look at this and they go, well, I shouldn't even try because I'm not going to be held up to that standard of songs, of songwriting. Or we hear that it's too repetitive and they look at a song and they go, well, the song that I've written that I thought I had a great chorus for, but I repeat the first two lines over and over. And, and I'm, I'm going to get chased out of the church because my song was repetitive. All throughout the scriptures, number one, we see songs that are done that are repetitive. Um, so I want you first to cast out that notion because they're all in the Psalms. Repetition is in the Psalms because it reinstills something. Even the best uh, songs, and, and I could go into a deeper topic, and I'm already six minutes into to saying something. Get a pastor who's passionate about something to not talk long about something, but I'll digress. Um, even the best song that you say is not repetitive, I would tell you that it is because in everything there's an A-B structure in something. Um, even songs, you know, you take songs like This Is Amazing Grace, that's that's not repetitive. It absolutely is uh, repetitive. There's A, B structures, A, B, B structures, you know, uh, A, A, uh, A, B, A, A structures, you know, on the way that you rhyme. So there's repetition in every song that we sing, no matter what. Um, so get that notion out of your head about being repetitious because it's there. It's everywhere. And some of the best songs that, that you would say songs are too repetitious, uh, if you write out your repertoire, your favorite songs, you'll still find songs that you'll go, oh, yeah, wait, that one is repetitious. But but this one's okay because, so here's the thing, as far as complexity of songs go, if you are a, a person who is interested in writing songs, don't let that sway you. Write your songs to God because no matter how complex or how simple a song is, there is a need for both. Because no matter where you are in your songwriting skill, this is one simple truth. We're all writing about the same God. Remember that frame that I said in the very big beginning? Each time that we write as songwriters, as crafters, and, and, and if you share this with somebody, tell them, to, tell them to skip through my rambling if they need to and skip right to at this point about 7 minutes and 55 seconds, okay? Because this is the point. As songwriters, we are all painting a picture of God. And it is the same picture, just a different frame. Same picture, different frame. And that painting that we're painting a picture of is a diamond. God is a diamond. And, and we can look at that diamond all that we want to. And most of us, we're, we're looking at it and we can sing almost the same song because we're looking at this diamond and this diamond is beautiful. And it is either uncut or maybe it's polished depending on where we look at that diamond from and what direction. And each of us as songwriters can look at that diamond from different perspectives, underneath, over top, from we're looking at it and singing about it and writing songs from a different vantage point. No matter how you cut it, we're all singing about the same diamond and writing songs about the same diamond. So if it's a complex song, by all means, there's a need for it because maybe there's a small percentage of Christians who know about the deep complexity of God that need to hear that song, that need something to fill their tanks, to make them really chew on something and go, wow, that was deep. I needed that. But can I submit to you, songwriters, that there is a big population of people who don't yet understand the vastness of God and God's complexity that needs simple truths to know that simply God is a beautiful diamond. And if it takes some simplicity and some simple truths, then by all means, write it. Same picture, different frame. Go write about his brilliance. Go write about that diamond. 
And don't let anybody ever tell you it's not deep enough. Because how deep is God? God is the subject and God is deep to begin with. We can't possibly sit around and critique other people's songs and say, you're not deep enough. And yet at the same time, read an entire book like Revelation and say, oh, wait a minute. Can you dumb this down for me? Because I don't understand. It's trying to figure out in between how that diamond looks. So look at the diamond, find a sparkle in it somewhere, and write about it. Put it into a picture of a song. Same picture, different frame. Love you guys. Ride on.